Hi, my name is Dave Wilkin. I'm the coordinator of jazz studies at the University of North Carolina at Asheville and a freelance trombonist. In an earlier video presentation entitled The Upstream Embouchure, I discussed what this embouchure type is and used my own upstream embouchure as an example while playing trumpet, trombone, tuba, and horn. In this short video, I'd like to briefly discuss the difference between upstream and downstream embouchures and address some common misunderstandings about how brass players' embouchures function. Philip Farkas was a world-renowned horn player and a highly regarded teacher who had an interest in how brass players' embouchures function. In 1962, he published a text covering his hypothesis that the best way to direct the airstream as it passed the lips was by blowing straight into the shank of the mouthpiece. He used an analogy of a coffee can wrapped by a drawstring bag as well as some drawings to illustrate this idea. He believed that the position of the jaw and the horn angle was responsible for how the airstream traveled past the lips. Trombonist and noted brass instructor Donald S. Reinhardt offered a different idea. According to Reinhardt, the direction of the airstream is determined by how much upper to lower lip is placed inside the mouthpiece and that all successful brass players play with either an upstream or downstream embouchure formation. Reinhardt believed that the player's embouchure type should be based on what works best for the individual's unique anatomy, not by the choice of the player or the player's teacher. This trombonist places the mouthpiece higher on the lips, thereby putting more upper lip inside the mouthpiece. Watching closely at how his lips line up inside the cup, you can see that the airstream is directed downward to varying angles, according to the register being played. Even though he plays with his upper and lower teeth aligned, and has a horn angle that is close to straight out, the predominance of the upper lip inside the mouthpiece makes this a downstream embouchure. My own embouchure has a lot more lower lip inside the mouthpiece, due to the very low placement. Looking closely at the position of my lips shows that the airstream is being directed upwards at varying angles also according to the register being played. Even though I play with my jaw receded and the horn tilted down slightly, the airstream definitely is directed upward. This trumpet player places the mouthpiece pretty close to half and half, but the upper lip still predominates inside the mouthpiece, and you can see that the airstream is still directed downward. The exact angle that the airstream is directed depends on the register being played. The lower a brass musician plays, the closer to the shank the airstream is directed. As the player ascends, the airstream will be directed closer to the upper or lower rim, depending on whether the player is upstream or downstream, like this horn player. In 1970, Eight years after he completed The Art of Brass Playing, Philip Farkas published a book of photographs that contradicted his earlier hypothesis that the airstream should travel straight into the shank of the mouthpiece. Photographs and observations Farkas made while watching virtuosi horn players confirmed what Reinhardt believed, that the angle of the airstream was dependent upon the amount of upper to lower lip placed inside the mouthpiece, and also that the angle of the airstream changes according to the register being played. It is possible to play successfully without ever knowing about your airstream direction, but being informed about how brass embouchures actually function can help teachers and students eliminate playing weaknesses and even avoid future problems. This trumpet player has a few embouchure issues hindering his playing, but one that may not be very obvious at first is his mouthpiece placement. His placement is very close to half and half and it is difficult to tell whether he is playing as a downstream or upstream player.
Moving the placement up higher on the lips to make it work as a downstream embouchure doesn't seem to help. Moving his placement lower on lips, however, making his embouchure function as an upstream one, is more successful. As it turns out, his half-and-half -half placement was advised by a former teacher, and not very long afterwards his difficulties began to manifest. With practice strengthening his embouchure formation, he should be able to learn whether his embouchure should be upstream or downstream, and the muscles will develop more control. I hope that you find this video interesting and helpful. It is very important to understand that the embouchure type should be based on the player's physical characteristics and is not a choice that can be made. A better understanding of how a brass embouchure functions and what situations cause dysfunction in the embouchure will never hinder a player's or teacher's abilities, provided that all analysis and corrections are done in the teaching studio and practice room. When performing, a brass musician's attention should be placed on being a good musical communicator.